Hey guys, I just want to shoot a fairly quick video about bonds. If you're a first year student taking macroeconomics, you are going to encounter bonds and hey, we want to know what they are, right? So let's talk about them. First of all, a bond is an IOU. So if I issue bonds, okay, if I'm an entity that's issuing bonds like a government or a business, I now owe you, okay? So if I sell the bond to you and I'm the original issuer of the bonds, I am going into debt. That's why we also call it a debt contract, okay? And that is a contract. The bond is a contract and it's gonna tell you, the buyer of the bond, how much I, the person now who owes you money, is gonna to have to pay you. And it also tells you the maturity of the bond, which is when the bond expires. Now, if you didn't follow that, just let's head over to this bond right here, okay? I've got the issuer, the US government. So the US government, what we're gonna say, has to borrow money because they're running deficits, okay? So they have to borrow money. So they're gonna print out a bond. This has got a bond of face value of 1,000. Now I want you to understand the face value is printed on the bond, okay? It is contractual. Basically when this bond matures or expires, same thing, matures or expires, I now have to pay you that $1,000, okay? And usually that's how much you originally paid me or lent me when the bond was originally purchased, okay? So whoever has this piece of paper when it matures, and it's gonna mature on November 3rd, 2033, I gotta pay them $1,000. That's basically talking about paying you the principal back, right? You loaned me $1,000, I gotta pay you that $1,000 back on the maturity date when it expires. But there's definitely more to it, right? You're not gonna loan me money just to get your money back. You're gonna loan me money because you want interest, right? So now I've got this coupon rate, again, printed on the bond, it says 10%. So what that means is you take 10% of 1,000, which is $100, Whoever holds this bond, I, the issuer of the bond, and my name is on the bond, okay, and I'm apparently the U.S. government at this instance, so the issuer of the bond, the U.S. government, I now have to pay you $100 whenever that payment cycle comes up. Now, I'm making the payment cycle nice and easy. It is annual, okay, so once a year. So once a year, I'm going to pay you $100. That is set in stone. This is a contractual thing. Again, a bond is a debt contract. This is the contract. Whoever holds this piece of paper is going to get paid $100, basically in interest, every single payment cycle. That's annual, so every year. And when it matures, I've got to pay you that principal back, right? That face value back. So these are the things printed on the bond. The issuer, okay, who owes the money? In this situation, again, the US government could be a corporation though. We've got the coupon rate, which is basically the percent of the face value that I am guaranteeing that I am going to pay, that I am now obligated to pay, okay? 10% of 1,000 again was $100. I've got a maturity date. This thing is going to expire at some point, okay? This is not going in perpetuity. This doesn't last forever. Okay, so it will expire and when it expires, I got to pay that face value and then it's over. You can just go ahead and tear up that piece of paper because it's worthless after it expires. Okay, after that face value has been paid, it is now worthless. And there's again the payment cycle. It doesn't have to be every year. It could be every quarter or every half year. That all works. Okay, now one of the reasons why a corporation or a government is going to issue bonds is they don't want to borrow all their money from one entity and it's probably because it's difficult to borrow as much money as they want to borrow usually if you're going to issue bonds it's because you want to borrow a lot of money okay so what you're going to do is say look i don't want to just borrow from one entity okay because that one entity is probably going to charge me a little bit higher interest rate than if i could borrow from a bunch of different people why because if i borrow from one entity that's going to make it more difficult on that entity to liquidate that position and i'll get to that in just a second if they want to but if I issue bonds, hey, those people that lend me money, it's gonna be easier for them to liquidate that position, to sell off that position and get cash, okay? Because that's right. 
When I issue a bond, there's a very good chance that the buyer of the bond, the person who's lending me the money, is gonna turn around and sell that bond. And then it might get sold again and again and again. And that's what a bond does. It makes something very easy to resell it, which makes it attractive to the purchaser of the bond. Again, the person who originally purchased the bond is lending money, okay? So we're gonna kind of stylize this up. We're just gonna say the US government has to borrow a million dollars. So they would issue 1,000 of these bonds, right? 1,000 uh, bonds with a face value of 1,000 gets us to $1 million. So they say, look, I'm gonna issue 1,000 bonds and I'm gonna usually kind of, I'm gonna sell them to somebody that's called an underwriter or a primary dealer. And then they're gonna go ahead and sell it again to other people. That's kind of how it really goes down. But that's, from a conceptual basis, that's not so important. The big thing is I'm gonna sell these bonds. I can sell it to a bunch of different entities. And then what they can do is turn around and sell it and sell it and sell it, okay? So again, a bond is a debt contract, okay? I want to juxtapose that with a stock. A stock is something that um, continues into perpetuity indefinitely. If I sell stock, and by the way, the US government can't sell stock, you can't sell ownership in the government, okay? But a corporation could raise money, get money by selling stock. But when they do so, what they're doing is not borrowing money, they're selling equity, they're selling ownership in their company. And so if they sell ownership, that's it, guys. Whoever bought that stock now has ownership in that company forever. They have a right to the profits of that company for as long as that company exists. There's no maturity date on stock, okay? And on top of that, there's no ceiling on how much somebody could earn when they buy stock, okay? If that company really takes off and becomes a really big company and super profitable, hey, if you bought stock, the sky's the limit and how much of a return that you can make. But a bond is different, guys. Here's the deal, guys. You're gonna get paid $100 and that is it for the life of the bond. And when the bond hits its maturity date, you get that principal and then the bond is done. Again, it does not continue into perpetuity. This again is a debt contract. Stocks are not a debt contract. Stocks represent ownership, equity in a company, okay? And again, they're gonna last into perpetuity. They're gonna last forever, okay? So that's a big, big difference between the two. Now, before I wrap up this video, guys, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the bond price. The bond price, I put it down here to emphasize it is not printed on the bond. The price of this bond can absolutely fluctuate and well, almost definitely fluctuate over the life of the bond, okay? So every asset price can fluctuate. This is the price of the asset, okay? And it can fluctuate. What might cause the bond price to fluctuate, to be different than the face value? I'm gonna focus on just two main reasons, okay? The number one reason is if interest rates change. When I issued this bond, or when the government issued this bond, interest rates for this level of risk, okay, were probably around 10%. That's why the coupon rate is 10%. If interest rates then went up to 11 or 12%, well, governments would now issue bonds that had 11 or 12% coupon rate, which means this particular bond would now have to sell at a discount, okay? So the price of the bond would go down, okay? If I had to unload this one that only has a coupon rate of 10%, it's gonna sell at a discount if new bonds have higher coupon rates. So that's a very important takeaway, guys. When interest rates go up out there, okay, bond prices go down so that their yield increases, okay? So if the bond price goes down, remember, it's gonna pay $100 no matter what. As the bond price goes down, the yield, the rate of return of the bond goes up. Very important to know, interest rates go up, bond prices, prices of existing bonds that are out there are gonna go down. That inverse relationship is always true. The other reason it might sell at a discount is if something happens where this entity, whether a government or a corporation, becomes less credit worthy. It's more at risk that they might default. They might not be able to make full payments on these bonds. If that happens, again, the bond price is gonna go down so that the yield of the bond goes up, right? Because hey, if this is a more risky situation, 
I, the buyer of a bond, want to see that bond price go down. Whew. All right, two reasons why this bond price might go down. It becomes more risky or the interest rates go up, okay? And of course, the opposite is true. If all of a sudden this thing becomes even uh, in a better position, if it becomes less risky, the bond price actually goes up and the yield goes down. Or if interest rates go down, again, the bond price would go up and the yield would come down commiserate to that decrease in interest rates out there. I hope that made sense to you. A bond, an IOU, a debt contract, something that expires, okay? It is not a stock. It's not an equity position. It doesn't last forever and it doesn't give anybody a right to profits. It gives a person a right to the coupon rate times the face value, some payment of interest. That's what it gives a person a right to for usually a fixed amount of time. Hope that made sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.